Let us look now in the last step at the DA converter. Yeah, so there's the DA converter and the output. So the question is, is it possible actually to reconstruct the signal? To reconstruct the analog signal? So if this is obviously not possible, then the whole signal processing story won't work. So um, the good news is it works, but we need to show basically quickly how um, and how this has been proven. So let's basically describe our signal as a superposition of different sine waves. So let's say cosine and then pi f i t plus theta i. So, so these are all the frequencies in this in the signal, and um, obviously all these all these frequency. So f, if we have a maximum frequency here. This f, this f max needs to be obviously smaller than half of the sampling rate. So we know this, so otherwise it won't work. So we've got only frequencies which are half of the sampling rate. Phi here, or phi in the English version, phi is just a phase factor. So we can also represent signs here in this way. This is the amplitude of the frequency. Yeah, and so we are essentially have a, if we have a signal maybe which, which looks like looks like that that we are approximating this with different with different waves yeah, maybe a higher higher frequency wave here and so on and so on and so we're just doing a superposition of this so so the so-called sampling sampling theorem states that if if a signal is constructed this way, it is possible to completely reconstruct it. Okay, so let's have a look how this could be could be done. Let's write this here properly. How? So how can we reconstruct our original signal? Remember our digital signal. It's just a, just a sequence of different pulses. Yeah, so something like that, which represents our our signal. And the original signal was probably probably more something like this. So we would like to to basically come come back back to this to this analog signal. So how do we do this? And the idea is the following. So we take a function g of t, which looks like this 2 pi and then f f max t divided by 2 pi f max t so the idea is to take to take this function now here so that's our maximum frequency as defined um, previously and and so we take this function here and put this function here on every of these of these samples here. So the question is: so how does this how does this function here here look like? So for this purpose, obviously, because we have skills in MATLAB, and in this case here, let's just let's just use octave for a change. And um, let's have a look how this function looks like. So let's um, do this quite 
precise. Let's create our time vector here and then our function here 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by t and then dot slash divided 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by t. So if I haven't done any mistakes then this should calculate something. Yeah. So because I had omitted the semicolon we've seen the result. So let's do this like this and plot this function now. Okay so let's pull this here in our area and we see that's a that's a shape of this of this function here. So this function is essentially here um just like a smooth smooth hump and then, then with two negative troughs here on, on these on these two sides. Um so let's go back to our drawing here. So this means that at every point here this function will generate something like this. And so if we are if we're adding up these these functions now, then this resulting curve here is reconstructed from this. So if we're using this function here, then then we can essentially essentially do that. The question is, so what is what is this here actually? And this is essentially an ideal low pass filter. It's an ideal low pass filter with cut off at f max. The problem is with ideal low pass filters, ideal low pass filters don't exist in the real world, but we can always generate an approximation of these low pass filters just by creating a real world low pass filter. And this is usually done that we have our AD converter and then a low pass filter just at the output.